Hello and welcome to March 2024 Tully Textiles. So by popular, popular request we're going to have a look at a bit of visible mending today. So mending is one of those things that used to be a necessity for people pretty much everyone would know basic mending skills because you would have to do it and then with the sort of rise and rise of fast fashion it fell out of fashion because it was much cheaper and much easier just to buy new but as we're starting to realize the costs of fast fashion both on the environment and people we're becoming more and more conscious about the need to look after our clothes and prolong their life and one of the things that I'd really like to stress is you don't just have to mend really precious items. It doesn't have to be something you spent a lot of money on. If you've got a favourite t-shirt or a favourite jumper and it only costs you a few pounds from the high street or from a charity shop, you can still mend that. You can still give it new life. And what we're going to have a look at today, as I say, is visible mending. And what that's going to do is going to be visible. So rather than worrying about getting a perfect mend and making it match, we're going to do something that makes a bit of a feature so that people can see the work that you've put in. And I think that's a, a really nice touch. So a bit like the Japanese concept of kintsugi, where they use gold to fill in cracks in pottery and give it a new life and it celebrates the, the life of the piece. Visible mending is a little bit like that. Now, there are lots and lots of different types of visible mending. What I'm going to show you today is just a very basic basket weave darn. So it's nice and simple. If you get into it, there are loads of resources out there for visible mending, books, online videos, all sorts of things. So if it's something that you're interested in, do feel free to take it further. So what we'll do first is to have a look at what we're going to need. So the first thing you're going to need is something with a hole in it. I got this jumper in a charity shop and it's already got a little hole in which I'll repair later. But there's also a slightly bigger hole down here, which is what I'm going to repair in this video. And this is a wool jumper. So that's quite nice to have a, a wool jumper. Quite like the colour, but I'm going to use some nice embroidery threads, just stranded cotton to do my repair. Normally you would repair like with like, so normally if you were repairing a wool jumper you'd use wool and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is laundering, different fibres react to laundering differently, different shrinkage rates and things, and you want the feel to be the same. The reason I'm using the embroidery cottons is they're very readily available, they come in a whole array of colours and I've got lots of them. So rather than buy new wool, I'm using up some of the threads that I've already got. Now, I've got a couple of these darning mushrooms, and if you've inherited a sewing collection from anyone, you'll probably have one of these. This one, um, I'm not sure where this one came from. Well, it came from St. Joanne in Tivoli, maybe. So it's a, a souvenir one, but you often just see plain ones or even plastic ones. Again, you don't need a darning mushroom, but it will make life easier. If you haven't got a darning mushroom, something like a lemon or kind of a, a nice gently curved surface will do. You will also need needles. I like to use a fairly sharp needle to make my base stitches and then I'll often swap to a darning needle, which is much blunter, to do, do the weaving. So we'll have a, a couple of different types of needle, but again, use what you've got and a pair of scissors. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's begin by getting our setup right. I am going to work on a darning mushroom to make it a bit easier. And what I'm going to do is basically place my hole over the middle of my darning mushroom. And then with my left hand, because I'm right handed, I'm going to hold it. And I don't want to pull it really tightly because you can see that's going to make my hole much bigger and put it under tension. And it's also going to mean that when I finish my darn, it's going to be stretched out of shape. So I want to keep it taut but not stretched. If you're using a woven fabric, if you're repairing a woven fabric, this is much easier to do because you won't have the, the worry about stretching. But again, 
even with a knit fabric, I wouldn't worry too much. This is kind of adding a bit of character. With a fairly big hole like this, what I would do first is I would do a running stitch border around the edge and what that will do is it will stabilise the area we're going to work in and also make it easier. So I've picked out this purple thread to do that and I'm using my stranded cotton and I'm just using two strands to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just work a little running stitch border and you can see I'm being quite generous. I'm leaving quite a big area around the hole because obviously what we don't want to do is do our repair finish it and then find that the holes crept underneath so by working the area around the damage as well as over the actual damage will create a much stronger longer lasting repair so as i mentioned before I'm going here for kind of definitely style over substance. I'm not overly worried about getting everything about this perfect. I'm I'm going for look. So don't worry about your stitches being brilliantly even. Now I find it easier at this point to come to the back of my work and make a knot. And I'm just trying not to pull that tightly because I want it to stay nice and... um nice and flat that's the word I'm looking for there we go and I'm not worried about these knots on the back of my thread I think that's fine so again for the purposes of demonstration I'm going to use some different colours so I think next up we'll use some of this nice bright pink and what we're basically going to do is we're going to form a foundation of stitches going one way and then the other and I'm going to use all six strands for this because I want quite good coverage. It is going to mean that it's quite bulky. So if you want a less bulky repair, if you're working on something quite thin, this is quite a thin jumper, then obviously you can use fewer strands. But um, I quite like, quite like a nice chunky repair. There we go. So again, I will pop my mushroom back under there I won't I'm going to start with my with my stitch so I'm going to come out I'm going to start by working my up and down stitches if you imagine we so I'm going to start just at the edge of my running stitch and I'm starting on this side just so that my knots on the back to make life a bit easier there we go and I'm going to pop it back on to my darning mushroom and again just gently arranging it taking a bit of time to get it one comfortable in my hands so I can work it comfortably and two making sure that it's nice and flat but not too stretched out and what we're going to do is we're basically we're going to work running stitches on the solid bit and when we get to this we're going to take the stitches right across so I'm just going to work a little running stitch that's my first line and then next to it I'm going to do a line going up like that then I'm going to come back down and I'm doing these running stitches these in and out stitches again to add a bit of extra stability to my darn so I'm just working in line sorry I keep keep covering up what I'm doing with my hand as I turn around and I'm working them pretty close together the closer together you work them, the stronger your darn will be. So you can see how that's starting to come together. There we go. So now we're kind of, we're getting to the area of repair. So what I'm going to do is try and come out where there is still some thread. And I'm going to go right over the hole. I'm going to make that one long stitch before carrying on with my running stitches. Okay, to start to cover that hole. And then again, turn around for my next row. So when I finish, I'm going just outside my running stitch line. So the running stitch line will more or less disappear. I'm just using that as a guide so I know what kind of area I need to fill in. So again, we'll go back up 
and I'm at the edge of my hole so again this time I'm going to go straight over up into the top little running stitch there back down for the next line and with something like try not to catch your fingers in with something like a knit you've actually got stitches to work with so you can use those as a guide if you want to make it a bit more even I'm not really too worried about things like that so I'm definitely going for for style I want it to be an effective darn but I also want it to look nice so that's what I'm going for and I would recommend that you take a little bit of time on this you want it to to look good and also you do want it to be nice and stable so just working my way along and when you're doing your stitches try not to do them too tightly because you do of course want to be able to keep the um keep the tension nice you don't want it too tight, you don't want it to kind of sit too proud of the surface and you don't want it to gather up too tightly. So that's where the mushroom or similar is helpful, just to help you keep that tension. So I'm at the edge of the hole now, so I'm going back to doing my running stitches. And say so this is very much a kind of making it up as you go along kind of um, process you can be you can be as ordered or indeed disordered as you like it really is personal preference if you look in in books old older books of how to mend you know it will show you how to do it very beautifully and invisibly but it's just as good to take a slightly different approach I think so again, now that I'm on the solid fabric, I'm going back to the running stitches. And what that, that will do is, I'll show you the back in a moment, I'm just going to do one more row of this. There we go. What that will do, if we take it out, is start to build up this nice area of stability. So those running stitches on the back, obviously we can't put stitches where the holes are. But this is going to really stabilise it. Otherwise, what you might end up with is a patch of darning, but the area around unsupported. By adding these running stitches in around the edges, that's going to really stabilise and it's going to stop that hole spreading any further. So let's finish that colour off. And with a smaller hole, you might find that one direction of stitches is enough. You might find that actually that's stabilising your fabric. It's filled up the hole nicely. You don't need to do any more. But as I mentioned before, this is a fairly big hole. And obviously you can use this for bigger. If you get very big holes, you might want to consider putting another fabric behind patching. But again, you kind of, you, you go with what's right for that garment. And as I mentioned a couple of times, you know, this really is, there's a hole, a hole? No, there's not a hole, there's a knot. There's a knot in that one. Um, you know, this is just one type of visible mending. There are so many different imaginative ways of doing this. Don't feel that this is the only option. Use this as a starting point and hopefully you'll feel inspired to... Uh, pull out that jumper that you really love but you haven't worn because it's got a hole in it and uh, make a bit of a feature of it. If you don't want to use knots you can use threads and just weave the ends in make them part of the darning. I'm just making life easier for myself by using a knot. So what we're going to do now is basically the same thing but we're going to work our threads this way. So to make life easier for myself which way is it going to be easier that way I think. I'm going to just turn it round. So I'm going to pop it back on my darning mushroom. And I'm just going to start working my lines again. So little lines of running stitch again. We're just outside that original uh, running stitch circle that we made. And you can make your stitches cross over under 
round about the previous one, previous row. And again, it's up to you how precise you are with this. You know, you can go over under each one in a proper weave, which is what we're going to do when we get to this bit. Or you can just be a bit more free form with it. But you can hopefully see how it's starting to come together. So again, so I'm just working my running stitches in and out in lines. I'm thinking a little bit about my previous set, my pink set of lines, and I'm trying to get a bit of interaction there. I'm also, I'm doing this sort of quicker than I would if I was was working on it on my own, as it were. So it's perhaps not quite as thought out as I would normally do, but that's fine. It'll just give you the technique. I can always come back and refine if I want to. Okay, struggling to get that one back through. So now we're approaching the bit where we've got these long threads that are covering the hole. So I'm going to start just paying a little bit more attention to where I'm going in and out. Because what I want to do over these threads is I want to weave them. So I'm going over one, under one, over one, under one, over one. And that will take me to the edge. And that will start making our basket weave. Okay, so we'll go back the other way again. So we're doing running stitch where we've still got solid fabric. And then when we get to the open threads, where I went over before, I'm going to go under. So I'm going under, I went under that before, so I'm going over, under, over, under. So it's basically alternating, it's just a very basic weave. Hopefully you can see that there. It's having a bit of trouble struggling, a bit of trouble struggling, a bit of struggle focusing is what I was trying to go for there. And then back to our running stitch to take it to the edge of the threads. And we just keep working in that way. Again, normally, to be honest, I would probably do these lines a bit closer together, but I want to I want to show you the process. So I went under this before, so I'm going over this time. Again, alternating, carrying on. And it'll depend what you're mending. Some things will take a more open mend. You don't need to do a very close mend. So just think about the garment that you're mending. And of course, it doesn't have to be garments. You can mend any fabric that's got a hole in it. Uh, under, over, under, over, under. And that'll do for my long stitches. And then I'll just fill in the rest of this space just with our running stitch lines. we go almost there so I'm just going to whiz through these just so you can see kind of the the idea and as I say I would probably do this a bit more fully I would put my lines of stitching closer together but when I've finished showing you this I can always go back and put some more in I could add another colour but what you can hopefully see is we've got this woven bit in the middle. We've got these running stitches running in and out of each other in that area that we defined at the beginning. And if we have a quick look over at the back, we can see that now we've got a really nice safe area of fabric so all these edges where the hole is are nicely caught in with the stitches the hole is covered with that weave that we made so that's all nice and solid and this should now last for a good while and say so if you don't want to use knots you can just weave your stick your thread ends 
through your stitching to secure it. That's also fine. Add a bit of extra stability and it's a little bit neater. There we go. So that's the back of the work. And then on the front, we've got this nice colourful patch. It's obviously been mended, but it's been mended securely. I can go on and wear that now and I'm happy with that. As always, if you've got any comments or questions, do feel free to drop me a line or drop them in the comments below the video. Tully Textiles is part of Tully House's outreach programme. So each month I show you a different technique or material or way of doing things. This afternoon, if you're watching this video when it first goes out, we've got our Zoom session. So we'll be having a look at the darning, but you'll be able to ask questions live, as it were, and have a chat with the other members of the group. So if you want to do that, you can find the details on my Facebook page. If you've got ideas for future sessions, do let me know. Do send me pictures of your, your finished darns. I like to see how everyone gets on. And other than that, have a lovely time, happy stitching, and I'll see you next month.